Hey there. I'm Adrian Stevenson. Uh, I'm the, on the content team for Chief Architect, and I also do a lot of the uh, dimension and uh, sample plans and PDFs that you can download on our website. So I wanted to get together uh, with some of you that are interested and show you how I use dimensioning in Chief Architect. So welcome. Um, if you, how many people have been to done a go to webinar meeting before we have a little hand raise icon in the uh, uh in your question section so you can raise your hand and show uh who has attended before i am relatively new to this so you'll have to bear with me i'm working from home today we also have a couple of our team members here that uh, are going to help me answer questions uh, so when you have questions, use that raise your hand tool and we'll address them the best we can. There's also a chat section uh, in your dashboard. And Carrie, say hey, Carrie. Hey, everybody. Welcome. So she is our chat master and she'll be there uh, adding links and posting some polls so that you can kind of give us some feedback and interact with us. And then we also have Phil on the line and he's gonna be doing a lot of the question answering. Say, hey, Phil. Unmuted. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us this Thursday. If you have any questions, just type them into the chat option. And sometimes we get a lot of chats that come in all at once. So please be patient as we answer them and we'll just answer them in the order that they're received. And it looks like we have a few folks that might be having issue with audio. Um, I think I have a slide to help you troubleshoot that. Let me bring it up on my screen real quickly. And it looks like I might have a slight delay uh, using this uh, meeting software. So we'll just have to bear with me a little bit. So if you are having some issues with your audio, these are your options. Um, if your computer computer audio isn't working properly, choose the phone call option and it will give you a phone number you can dial in directly on your phone. All right, so um, I wanted to just kind of give you guys a brief overview of what I'm planning on talking about today. So we are going to work on a, this plan and I'm going to um, show you guys what I do to uh, add dimensioning to it. So I'll do some dimensioning in elevation views and also in plan views and just kind of show you how the tools work in Chief Architect. Uh, I'd like to leave the actual demonstration, demonstration uh, portion of this to maybe you know 30 minutes and then that will give us a lot of time to do some live question and answers so if you have questions as they come through we'll try to recognize those somebody might catch my attention and we can uh, unmute your mic you can ask your question and then we can all kind of learn uh, together as a group so I'm kind of excited about that I also have added in uh, the handout section you may see a downloadable PDF there and I'll just try to bring that up on my screen also really quickly. So this is um, this is a PDF. It, it prints out at eight and a half by eleven. You can download it. Um, the kitchen, or I'm sorry, the bathroom that I'm working on is actually one that I did a demonstration for for Chief Academy last year. And this PDF kind of has in green some of the notes that I try to hit on when I do um, this type of a topic. So we'll probably focus mostly on using the actual dimension tools and we may not get to every one of these notes but you're welcome to download it and use this as kind of a tips and tricks reference tool and if you see something on here um, after we, we kind of get done going through the main process then you can kind of ask for a demo of those small pieces so uh, that is an option for you as well so today we're working on a bathroom plan. This is not my design, this is actually the design of Robin Rigby Fisher and we worked on this project recreating her plan for the NKBA study guide. So on my screen you can see a version of that PDF 
And this is a PDF with my notes on it for a presentation I did for Chief Academy that covered the whole layout set. Make a note that on page B8 of this document, there are a number of links to videos that we have produced. And they talk about other kitchen and bath related topics so that maybe you can get a few new tricks up your sleeve using those tools. I also want to take a second to show you our NKBA page of our website. So it is chiefarchitect.com slash NKBA and we cover a lot of different topics for kitchen and bath designing. Is anyone here exclusively like a kitchen and bath designer or NKBA member or student? I think we have a poll that we can ask those questions and if you want to just participate with that we'd appreciate it. The final version of this PDF and the others that we created for this study guide project are available for download on our NKBA site. So if you just click on that link for NKBA study guide and scroll down, you'll see that you have this 360 viewer area and a bunch of different designs with the PDF files available. And this is kind of what the final version of the rendering of Robin's bathroom looked like. That's kind of fun. We, I think this is a ray trace. Yeah, we made a ray trace and then we exported it as a 360 view and hosted it using our 360 viewer. Okay, so let's jump in here. I'll open Chief Architect. I'm using Chief Architect Premier. Who here has Chief Architect Premier or Chief Architect Interiors? I believe all the features I will show today are available in interiors, though I'm sure Phil can stop me if I'm wrong. So I want to talk just really briefly about our floor plan view. This is the view we're going to dimension. This is my actual drawing. So this is the project file. It's got my walls, my fixtures, my doors, my windows, all that stuff in it. This is the 3D model and this is your main chief architect project. I also have open the layout page. Does anyone here know what a layout is? If you don't have experience with a layout, this is essentially our printable view in Chief Architect. So this is your kind of your paper space. And this is where you configure all of the different variations of your project drawings and your notes and your details and all that stuff so that you can print it for permitting. So when I put together a layout page, I like to think of it as each page represents a different trade. The floor plan view, it's not dimensioned because we're going to be doing that next, but it's got kind of all of the notes that you would need to show for the general layout and so that your client can understand what the space is going to feel like in the plan view. And then on the second sheet, we've put together a construction view. So this shows your demolition view and where your framing and structural stuff goes. And on the third page, I have my mechanical page. So this has all my electrical stuff and my HVAC and that sort of thing. Let me show you four. This has my wall elevations. So I have dimensioned wall elevations that show just what the face of each of the walls in this space look like. So the reason that I am showing you this is just to point out the fact that all of these images were created off of that same design project file that I initially had open. It is pretty standard in Chief to do just that and what you'll do is create saved plan views. So each of these views that you see on my screen, I can click on them. I can actually double click on them and it's a shortcut that will jump me into that version or into that view of my project. But these are viewports and they contain the preset layer sets that I've chosen for my mechanical plan in this case. And I'm using, whenever I edit this mechanical view, it's using active defaults. So my dimension defaults are set up so they just snap to my walls and my electrical objects. All right, so looking at our floor plan view, I just want to point out a couple of different things. I have my space here. In Chief Architect, you always want at least a room specification. That's how the program knows how to interpret the information you're putting into it and what to do with it. So we work off of rooms. It gives you your floor platform and your ceiling platform, and each room has its own custom set of definitions. Now you'll notice that something funny about this particular room is I do have walls here where the water closet and the shower are. So what I'd happen to do on this scenario is take these smaller walls that divide those spaces up. And if you open the specification on your wall, 
you can tell it that you don't want it to have any room definition. So the program is going to ignore this particular wall. It will just use it as a partition in the space, but it's not going to include it in the room definition. Now the reason that that's important is because we are going to be dimensioning this space based off of a room. I want all of my floor plan dimensions to be relevant to this as a whole. So once I've done my room definition, I'm going to start coming into my dimensioning tools and adding them onto my screen. On our toolbar here, we have our manual dimension tools. So these are the dimensions that you just click and drag and it will draw a single string of dimensions. You have a few different varieties of types that you can create. And then we have our automatic dimension tool. So we have auto exterior dimensions and auto NKBA dimensions. So if we click on the auto exterior dimensions, you can see that it's ignoring the individual rooms and it's just dimensioning the entire space. So this is great if you're doing a remodel or a new house plan and you only want to show these exterior dimensions. What we're not getting is our center line dimensions to our fixtures and it's including the full space instead of just the bathroom like we want. So I'm going to undo this and instead I'm going to click on my NKBA auto dimension tool. So you can see when I click on it we get this nice little tidy package of dimensions just for this one room. The reason that this worked is because my room is set as a kitchen or a bathroom. So again she has some smarts built into it. It realizes if you're using NKBA or kitchen and bath automatic dimensions. It probably needs to be for a kitchen and a bath type of a room. So if your room does not have a type defined in here, that button won't appear to work. In order to make it automatically work out of the toolbar is to have your room defined as a kitchen or a bathroom. It might work for a laundry room or a utility. You'll have to test it. I can't remember. Okay, so we have them on our screen and I will be the first to admit it doesn't look great. So we have extra dimensions here and I'll just walk you through kind of how I would process through this if I were doing a set of documents myself. I always start with automatic dimensions. I feel like it gives me 80% of what I need and then I edit from there. So when I click on any dimension, you can see that I get these handles across the dimension string, the round handle, allows me to drag new dimensions off of the end so I could add another dimension to the wall corner if I chose to. And the diamond handles indicate what is being snapped to from this dimension string. So in order to get the diamond handles, this is kind of a, a funny thing, click on this horizontal or the string line where the text intersects. You'll see that you have the diamond handles here at the bottom. If you click on an extension here, you'll get these square handles and those are the ones that control the actual length of those extensions. So while I have this selected, I may as well do it. For my center lines that I go to fixtures, I like to pull my extension down onto the actual fixtures that are being represented just because it helps make a clean view and my plumber will know exactly what I'm referencing when I have my dimension on the screen. Kind of on that same token, we have way too many dimensions for these fixtures here. I would probably lay that out with a template or something and might not dimension it in this particular view. So I'm going to take those off and if I need to remove a dimension that is on my string, I just click and drag away from the dimension and it will pull that snap off. So you can see how those are disappearing. Okay, so now I'm left with just one centerline dimension and I can tell what it's snapping to because it's got this little diamond handle on it. And again, I want that extension to be really long so there's no confusion. And there we go, we're snapped to the center of our tub. So this gives me NKBA guideline dimensions to this particular wall. The guidelines dictate that your first row of dimensions are supposed to snap to the interiors of your walls and then any openings in the walls. We don't have any openings here, so we're, not, we're just omitting that dimension string. 
the second string or the middle string goes from the surfaces of any walls and then catch the centers of your fixtures. So in this case, I'm catching my faucet and sink, which are in line, and my tub. I could add a dimension to my the center line of my handrail if I wanted to. I can just grab that diamond handle and it will add, and you just snap to where you get an indicator. And you can see the program will put another dimension on this string, but it doesn't have that center line marker. So if I need it to have a center line marker, I can open up its specification and then for any of those extensions, for this one, you can see the little number three right here. Extension three, mark as centerline. So when I do that and then deselect the dimension, you can see that I have this centerline indicator. And again, I'll just grab it and pull it down. Now maybe I'd want to dimension to each of the anchor points center lines. You could do that too. I just chose the easiest route. And then what I do is just work my way around the edges here. So let's do, I'll show you a couple tricks on this one. I'm not going to do the full thing because it will take way too long. But again, here we have our openings and I have too, much, too many openings selected. So I'm going to pull that off. And then to our center lines, again, I don't think I would center line all of those. I would manage that a different way in the field. So I'm going to get rid of those. I'm going to pull down this center line extension. And I'm going to kill a bunch of these extra dimensions that I don't want here. So just pulling those off. The distance you have to pull with your grip handle is dependent on how closely you're zoomed in. So some days you might find that you have to pull really far and some days you might notice that you don't have to do much of anything and those dimensions will come off. Also if you if while you're dragging you happen to pick up a snap somewhere along the way the dimension will just snap to that point instead. So I just like to pull it way off my screen. I find it more reliable that way. Okay, so that gives us our second wall. So now we have that dimensioned. And then a couple more things that I just kind of want to note as we go along. I don't love sometimes the way that Chief Architect locates some of these dimensions. And I make I feel like they're difficult for somebody to read. So the goal in creating your dimension drawings is to make a beautiful drawing that's clean and easy to read. To me, we're having an issue with that in this particular case. If I have a, a extension that crosses a number, then what I like to do is select the dimension with the number that's being interloped. And if you look really closely, there's a little square over the text of that dimension. If you put your cursor over that square, then you can click and drag and you can move that number anywhere you want without moving the string or the extensions. So what I like to do is take that label and if I happen to put it right back kind of centered over the line and off to the side and then let go, then you can see my dimension number is just off to the side here. So it's a little bit more legible. I do a similar thing here. Chief doesn't like to try to cram the numbers in between two extension lines if it's a tight fit. So what I like to do is take the number and I move it up and off to the side. And then I make these little CAD lines that I keep handy. And I put these CAD lines, and I'll just show you really quickly. On line style, I set it to use the same layer as my dimension. So it effectively becomes part of the dimension, even though it's just a CAD line, but it has all the same properties. So the line weights and the color and all that stuff will just match. So I make sure it's on the right layer. And then I just take this guy and I'll copy these around often. I'll move this one. I can hold my control key down while I'm dragging and I just bump it right to snap so it looks like a leader off of that dimension and then extend the line out. So sometimes you'll find that you just need to kind of, maybe I should actually go this way so it's not over the, I'm not crossing too many lines. All right, so 
those are two of my cleanup tips. So I guess three right here in a row. We have moving the label off to the side, but still over the dimension string. And we have selecting the extension and you can grab the red handles and drag it longer. And then the last one is, is to add a manual leader. So it's just a CAD line that's on your dimension layer and then move the text to align with it. So that gives you a pretty and legible dimension for your installers to use. So that covers editing. I would do the same thing on these two sides of my walls. I'm not gonna do it this time because I'm already taking up too much time. We're on the verge of plan dimensioning. I just wanted to do one more thing here and talk quickly about our manual dimension tools. So typically on a scene like this, I would need to get all of these guys dimensioned so that we know where those walls are located and where the door is located and all that stuff. To do that, I would use a manual tool, and that's from this set of drop downs here. So you have what we call the manual dimension, and I'll just draw some so you can see how they work. With the manual dimension, you just click and drag, and it's going to pick up everything that you have set to locate in your dimension tools. So this might be a good string to have. Okay, so that's showing all of my openings and my walls. And I have an extra one on the end here, so I'll just pull that guy off. And then the next one in our tool bucket is our end-to-end -end dimension. So if I click on it, I just click to start and click to stop. And wherever I'm snapping over, it will only pick up those two points. So that's just a beginning and an end. We also have something that does similar work and that's the interior dimension. So if I take it, the interior dimension and I drag it and it crosses walls, the interior dimension will pick up all of those wall ends. So you can see it's getting this wall, the end of a wall here, and these sides. And then our last dimension tool is our center line dimension and it uses those locate objects again. It's pretty much the same as the manual dimension. It picks up everything the manual dimension does and in addition to that it picks up the center line of your fixtures. So you can see those center line indicators. To be honest, when I am doing dimensioning, I almost always use the end-to-end -end dimension only. It might in theory not feel like it's as efficient, but it means that I am engaging in my drawing and when I add snaps, I'm doing it very consciously. So I know exactly what I'm dimensioning to. So when I need to do one or two, just a single dimension here or there, after I've edited my automatic dimensions, I typically just use the end-to-end -end dimension tool and then I'll add those centerline markers like I showed you earlier. Okay, so that is plan dimensioning. I will show you a quick elevation dimension. And then we can take some questions after that. Okay, so I have this elevation open on the screen. And the way you get to an elevation view like this, there's a couple different ways. I have a saved camera in my screen. So it's this marker here. I can double click on that and it's going to open my elevation view. I can also go to my project browser. So that's this little uh, tabbed looking button over here on the side. My project browser has all of the different views that I've created for this project uh, stored in it. So you can see the name of the project. This is my no dims version that I'm uh, editing for you guys. And we looked at the plan views. If I want to look at the cross section, you can see I have all of these cross sections in here. Now, apparently I did a pretty lazy job because I have no idea which any of these cross sections are. What I should have done is named them. So let's say we have this one open and I know that. So I want to name this to something recognizable. So I'm going to call it vanity wall. So this is just how you can stay organized in your drawings and you, you just know where they are so you can access them quickly later. It's all about trying to be efficient and making the best use of the tools that are available.
So now I know what that one is. I can open it that way. Or if I wanted to kind of start fresh, I can use my wall elevation tool. So this is my orthographic camera tools, wall elevation. And in order to create any elevation or any camera view, you put your cursor where you would be standing if you were starting the scene. So this is our cut line and you click and drag in the direction you want to capture and release your cursor where you want it to stop. So if you just imagine catching that section of your house plan, because it's a wall elevation, the program automatically omits any of the adjacent rooms. So we have this little uh, custom vanity object that needs dimensioning and the overall wall needs dimensioning. So again, I can use my automatic dimension tools. I have automatic ele elevation dimensions that will do just the exterior perimeter. And then I also have my NKBA auto elevation dimensions. If I click on that, then it's going to use the NKBA's guidelines to try to get your elevations dimensioned properly. And this works almost exactly the same way as the other tools that we saw. It's just that you're looking at a wall front on. The, the things that I kind of would point out again are, you know, you can do the editing, like this is supposed to be an overall dimension, so I would probably pull off these strings and just edit it quickly. Um, and the same for, you know, your tub. The program tries to pick up the toe kick, the countertop, and your backsplash, so we're seeing all of those controls here. If this is a vanity unit that I would purchase, then I probably don't need all of those dimensions. So you could take those off as necessary. I might decide that I need to dimension to the centers of my light fixtures. So I would add those. And once again, you can convert these extension lines to center lines. If you look on my edit toolbar here, we have the center CL plus option. And it will quickly add the center line indicator right here in our view. I think we weren't seeing that edit toolbar in our plan view because I probably wasn't snapping to the center indicator of whatever objects were I was dimensioning and that would be the difference there. And then again, I would use my, it's the same tools. Um, I can use my end to end dimension to just drag this overall dimension and then you wrap it up that way. So there's really not that big of a difference between the two views. It's just about what you're catching with the dimension strings. A few things that I note are, for example, for this mirror, I would like to give it a little bit more detail and show some reflection lines. So I simply just use my CAD line tool and turn on and just draw a couple reflection lines. So that's just a fast, easy thing to do. And then over here, we're cutting through a symbol object and sometimes you don't see the exact cut line. So what I'll usually just do is draw a CAD overlay so I can create kind of a CAD box to go over this object. And I'll just shape my CAD tools really quickly here. I can use the F key to fill it this. And then I'll break the top edge here. Kind of create the base. And then this simply is just kind of a form of whiteout that I can use to make sure that I'm, I have a clean view. So I'm just gonna give it a white fill. And of course I could have done a much more accurate job of cleaning that up, but that kind of just gives a cleaner view. So those can be saved, you send them to the layout, and that's how you kind of get your end results for your layout views. So some things that I don't cover today and that would have been nice if we had more time are the ability to create a construction plan in general, making a mechanical legend and resizing your CAD blocks to suit, and just all of the different uh, elevation views that you might have in your plan. 
but I want to be able to have some question and answer time with you guys. We did have a question come through email um, previously that I think is relevant to this topic and it was, the question was, is it possible to set preferences into in the NKBA or auto dimensions? I spent a lot of time removing unwanting points from these. And it there are some limited controls um, for setting up how those dimensions work, and I'll just touch on that really briefly. Um, they, like I said, they are limited, so uh, you may or may not get everything you need out of it. What I'm going to do is come into my edit menu and down to default settings. And these control all of the behaviors of the different features I have inside the program. So if I want to look at the behaviors of my dimensions, then I just find the relevant uh, dimension type that I want to edit. So for example, right here we have NKBA auto elevation dimensions. And if I double click on that, it brings up this dialog. Any edits I save here change changes the way that these dimensions behave um, every time I make a new set of dimensions for this particular plan file. So um, it brings up a topic of anytime you do want to change your default settings, and if it's a setting that you find that you need to change every single project that you start in the program, or it's something that you know that you'll probably do uh, for every design that you ever create, then those are good settings to add into your template project. And a template is just your uh, jumping off point every time you do a new uh, file. So uh, next Thursday, we're gonna be doing another webinar, at the same time, same place. Uh, Scott Harris is going to be guiding that one next week. And he is very specifically going to be covering saved plan views templates and setting up your defaults. So if you think you're interested in getting your default workspace set up, it's really a, quite an important thing in Chief and I recommend um, having attending that uh, webinar so you can get your head around it. Um, back to these defaults. There are lim these are the limited controls you have for the NKBA uh, specified uh, dimension defaults. So you can control where the dimensions appear on your screen, whether you have these left or right uh, dimension str strings on your walls. You can choose whether or not you want those to always rebuild every time you edit something in your view. And on the locate objects uh, panel, you have the option to turn on or off your um, snapping to cat objects. So, um, that's a limited control right now. I know that it's been on our list to do more, um, add more controls so that they're exposed for users to turn on and off what dimensions they're snapped to. Uh, we did have a few other emailed in questions before the webinar began. Chief Architect is on a home and work computer. I have a, fo a folder to transfer files back and forth. Can you suggest the best way to manage files? Mm -hmm. So um, what I have been doing, especially now that I've been working from home a little bit more, is um, I, I personally have a Dropbox account that I've set up and all of my favorite projects that I know I want to access on both Chief Architect and uh, at work and at home, um, I put those files organized in my Dropbox account so that I can access those both ways. There's a lot of different file sharing tools. I think Mac offers a proprietary one. Um, Google's got some. Um, there, I think Microsoft includes one called uh, OneDrive. I happen to be experienced using Dropbox and that's where I go. But yeah, any cloud sharing or file sharing app, that's a great way to uh, store your files. Looks like we have a question from Gina DeMassimo. Okay, Gina. Uh, hi, can you hear me? 
can, I can you hear, hear you, Gina. Okay, yep. wonderful. Um, I'm a relatively new user with Chief Architect, and um, I'm familiar with the automatic uh, dimensioning. However, each mm -hmm. time I try to grab the diamond shape to um, locate it, uh, locate it in, on uh, another object, I was mm -hmm. never able to succeed in doing this. Is there an any particular uh, things that have to be turned on, I, it, it never worked. Okay. Um, sometimes what am I can, missing? Sure, yeah, sometimes it can be a little tricky. I, it's hard to say off the top of my head what exactly you're missing, but let me just kind of show you um, the way that I get results, and then I can show you some tricks um, if you aren't getting it to work for you. So okay. I can cover those both of those bases for you. So um, the question of getting more dimensions added onto a dimension string, if you select on the dimension, and it's this floating diamond always, mm -hmm. so make sure it's a diamond shaped before it's, um, because sometimes you get different handles depending on where you're selecting. So always make sure to select on this. Um, Horizontal. Line. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then the diamond handle here, if you click and you drag, Sometimes you see the red indicator on your screen. Right now I have a triangle. That's mm -hmm. a snap indicator, and that means that the dimension is recognizing something to snap to. So we should check to make sure that your snaps are turned on so that it will actually pick up uh, snapping to objects. Uh. So that's one method, and I believe, let me see if I can quickly um, locate over here on, if you look on the very right side of my screen, down on the, towards the bottom, my cursor's moving down, down, down on the right. Uh -huh. I have this square looking toggle button that's got a circle over one of the corners, mm -hmm. and that's my snap tool. So if that's turned off uh, and no check mark on it, like this is the off mode, that's okay. off and this is on, um, the program may not snap to anything whenever you try to draw something new. So you'll just be free drawing everywhere. So I would check to make sure that's turned on. Okay, thank you. Thank you so yes. much. That might be, that might have been the problem. Awesome, okay. Um, while we're on the topic, however, if we did want to do something like, let me show an example of manual snapping. So um, maybe I want to snap to this guardrail or towel bar, but my installer doesn't necessarily care where the center of that is. Instead, he wants to snap to um, the mounting brackets. The way Chief works is it doesn't it's not smart enough to know where that particular spot of the hardware exists. So we have to help it out a little bit, and the way that we would do that is by adding a CAD point onto the screen. So um, what I like to do is come into my CAD tools here and I'm going to make a new point marker. So this little green plus sign is our point, point marker tool and it just puts a little crosshair on our sc screen. So you can see that crosshair. So what I'll do is just grab that guy and I want to move it down to be oriented where that where that mounting bracket is centered for um, our blocking. So I just grabbed that little four-headed move handle, and now I have a, a CAD object oops, that I can snap my dimensions to. Now that didn't move it perfectly because I only dragged it down with my mouse and I can only move orthogonally. If you need to place something um, more freeform, hold your control key down with one hand. So keep it down and pressed while the item is selected and then grab the move cursor. And this gives you freeform movement of whatever object you have selected. So that overrides that orthographic movement. And we'll just move this little marker down and put it where it needs to go. And now I can grab that new dimension, uh, add dimension handle, and I'll get the, oops, I accidentally right clicked, get that little red indicator, I don't know if you can see it, and that snaps my dimension to that uh, CAD point. 
So that's a way if you continue to have trouble or um, if there's an object that the program doesn't seem to like to find using the, um, the automatic snapping tools, just use your um, point marker tool. I set it to be really small. So this has properties just like anything else in the program does. If I select it, I can open up the specification for it. Maybe. And um, I make it really small for my kitchen and bath views because that's what I'm using it for. It's kind of just a hidden marker. So this one's an eighth inch and I've set my default in my template to be very small. Um, so every time I add a new marker, I can do that. You can do, you can use any type of CAD tool to snap your dimensions to. So it doesn't have to be only a marker. I just like the marker because it's pretty subtle. Adrian Ute wrote in a question. Um, I'll unmute his microphone, but he was having an issue where the dimension line is going from the subfloor to the ceiling rather than the finished floor to the ceiling. And he was wondering if you had any advice on that. Okay, hi Ute. Hi. So you, um, when you create your dimensioning, you're seeing the dimension snap to the subfloor? And to above the finished ceiling. So every time I'm working in the NKVA dimension default set mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the elevations, and I need mm -hmm. to manually add an end-to-end -end, um, dimension from the floor to the ceiling, it mm -hmm. always snaps from the subfloor to above the ceiling. So every time I need to go in and adjust that on okay. two location, okay. I'm trying to change that forever. Okay. Okay. So there's a couple different things we can do. So the first thing that I want to point out on that is when you're creating an elevation view, there's two types of elevations. There's a wall elevation and then there's a um, section elevation. So the difference between them is a, a wall, the wall elevation only includes the finished envelope of your space and the cross section will cut through everything including the platform. So Correct. if we look at our elevation tools, it's, um, this tool on our toolbar with the drop down, um, these first two, the cross section elevation and the back clip elevation will uh, show the entire model of your design, including the floor platform and above the ceiling. Uh, the wall elevation is the view that I've been kind of looking at here where you can't even see any of those details. So that's the first thing I would recommend is try to use the wall elevation when you can. I and do. that will, that should omit some of those scenarios. There are cases um, if you have invisible walls in your scene, that when you automatic dimension, it may like jump your dimension up higher or a little bit lower. Is that kind of what you find that you're seeing? Yes. Yeah, so I think what's happening in those scenarios is the chief architect gets confused when there's an um, invisible wall because it doesn't know where the defining end or beginning is for those edges of the space or the platform. So you will hit that scenario occasionally where when you automatically dimension, it will bounce above or below the ceiling. Um, and then, yeah, kind of the best thing you can do is just grab that dimension and drag, drag it back down to earth where it needs to go. Sometimes what I'll do to make it a little easier on myself is use my CAD box tool. So that's one of the CAD tools up on the top here. And I can actually snap those to the boundary of my space and you know if I had a vaulted ceiling even or anything like that I can take that polyline and I can modify it you know something like this and just like I did with the marker tool it creates um, a very defined edge that I can snap my dimensions to and it just makes moving those dimensions a lot uh, easier so yeah does that help? Yes. Great. Thank you for the question. Adrian Elliott has a question similar to that, but with regard to the fonts, I'll unmute his mic. Okay. Hi, Elliot.
Well, he was wondering if you could discuss how changing the size of your fonts in the plan view impacts the size in the layout view. Sure. So, um, whenever, yes, yeah, so to control the size and the scaling of your fonts, you'll want to think about the ratio that you're going to be printing to um, when you send to layout. So, everything has a scaling factor. So when you send to um, layout, maybe we'll send this view, um, this viewport that we're capturing, we want to send it over so it will print one half inch scale equals one foot. So in order for that to happen, you want your math to be right with your, your font heights so that they'll print it, you know, an eighth inch tall or whatever on your final document. All of those um, details are controlled in the dimension defaults that you're using in your saved camera view or in your plan view or any of those um, uh, arenas or those workspaces that you're working in. So that's why Chief allows you to have multiple or different saved plan views and different saved camera views and it allows you to have multiple defaults so that you can send things to the layout at half inch scale or quarter inch scale or whatever so that it prints at the correct size. So to kind of give you a peek into um, where you can control this, I'm going to, in my project browser, this is the elevation I'm working on, we're going to look at edit view. And this um, dialogue, if it, I can pull it up, uh, controls all of the attributes for this particular view that I've saved in my project. And so that when um, I want to come back and edit it, it remembers all these settings. And when I send it over into my layout, it behaves the way I want it to. So this is some of the stuff too that um, Scott's going to go in really detailed on next Thursday. So I really do recommend joining him, but I'm, I'll give you a kind of a peek at how it works. So any in any of the views that you open the specification for, um, there's going to be some variation of a defaults panel. And when you click on that, you can see uh, the defaults that are being accessed by this particular view and how it's how it's the different elements are being drawn. So for our dimensions, we're using NKBA dimension defaults. In the templates that we ship, and um, you can create your own sets of defaults that conform to whatever stylistic things or scales or layers or any of those things that you want to do. Um, so you can choose these and you can change them so that it appears differently depending on your needs. But if we look at just the NKBA dimension defaults and choose to edit that setting so we can see how it's kind of set up behind the scenes, then you see how those dimensions draw when you're using this as your active default. So we have controls that tell us how far off the walls these dimension strings will go. And then to get more to your point, um, we also have information about the text style. So this particular default is using a text style that we've predefined and it's set um, as what we're calling one half inch scale text style. So the idea is when you send this view over to your layout to print at one half inch scale, then it's always going to use um, these values so that it's a specific size. So when you do the math, um, of converting two inch two inch high text. So when your text here is two inches relative to like you know your cabinet and that sort of thing, when you send that to a scaled view where one half inch equals a foot, in order for that to print out at an eighth inch, you'd want two inches tall for your text. And you can you can choose and determine you know as many different of these pieces of information as you want and you can set your own custom text style and set your own heights um, but yeah it's really just about doing the math where you know the actual real life scale of this piece of text if you're to draw it you know right next to the countertop or whatever it's going to be exactly the right height compared to um, 
when you get it sent to the layout so it knows how to scale properly. So I don't know, that's a kind of a loose uh, explanation. Hopefully it's helpful. Abigail has a question. Okay. Hey, my question is, um, when you had up your original floor plan, it showed the direction of the flooring in it. Yes, right there underneath D in a much lighter um, line weight. Is that just lines that you drew and then change the line weight? Mm -hmm. Or is there like a setting we can do on that? So there's a couple different ways you can achieve a fill style for your spaces. Um, the, the scenario that I use here is very similar to the white out, white out feature that um, I was illustrating before, and these actually are um, just individual lines. So um, oh. what I'll yeah what I'll do is I'll draw the um, the start of the pattern and I can repeat it, but then I'll open up the specification for that. And under your line style panel, you don't have to use the default line properties so you can change the color and I just use kind of a mid-tone gray I feel like that shows up lighter you know so it doesn't have so much emphasis and um, yeah it, it feels like it prints out nicely on the other hand here I have this um, I think it's a, a cork floor sorry I couldn't remember the word um, in this area and so I did just almost the exact same thing where I just created a CAD box I gave it kind of an arbitrary shape and then on the fill style I gave it kind of a textury it happens to be a concrete type of a fill style and a light color here so that um, it just gives the um, a hint at what type of flooring material you have now you can choose your room specification you can open up the specification for any of your rooms and we have a fill style panel here so you can do the same thing the difference or the caveat for that is that it's going to do a fill for the entire region you can't get like the partitioned fill where it's just kind of a, a little swatch of it i guess gotcha thank you so much yeah no problem we have a question from peyton okay go ahead Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. Um, okay, so when I am using Chief and I am building a custom van and B unit like you have in your example, mm -hmm. um, or even just trying to mock some of the pre-made vanities that clients might buy through Wayfair or through Costco, et cetera, some mm -hmm. of those single vanity units will have two sinks in them. Um, mm -hmm. But Chief won't allow me to plop two sink bowls into a single vanity unit. Is there a way to override this? Yes, and I can show you real quickly here. Um, Ooh, awesome. Yeah, so this is gonna be kind of a, a hack job since I don't have a lot of space in this particular room, but it will <laughs> work. So what we'll do is, um, yeah, so when you place a sink from your library and it gets inserted into the countertop, one of the things that you can do is hold, um, press once on your tab key. Okay. Oops. And that's going to select um, the individual sink that you already have in your um, right in your vanity, and then that allows you to move it. So you have um, your edit handle, so you can resize it or move it and that sort of thing. So what I'm doing is just grabbing it and moving it to the side, so I have some room to work. And then um, I am just going to temporarily copy my vanity. So I'm just going to move it over here. Mm -hmm. And it's been a little while, but I think this is going to work. So then on this, the copied version of the vanity, then I'll do the same thing. I'm going to tab and get to the sink. And then I think I can just drag that guy right into the second vanity. Oh, no or way. Or into the first one. So you're just kind of, you're just kind of, you know, stealing from, oops. So it's still connected to this vanity, but I can hide it off to the side, but I can tab in here. So that will let me move it into place. I think a alternate method is I can also um, 
you can I believe I can place the sync freestanding um, from the library I'll just find the first one I have here well because normally when I try to copy a sync like I've done that I've you know in my example here I'm just clicking tab and then I'm trying to copy it but then it says yeah the, and there pops up saying sorry you can't right yeah it won't let you copy it from within the vanity but let me try this second method here I think it's gonna it lets me I believe Uh, if I just choose to place one floating, it's going to tell me, oh, well, that's not ideal. Don't place a floating sink um, in your room. Yeah. And I'll tell it I want it to do that anyway. And then I think I can do something similar where I just, oops, I need to get rid of this one. So let's get rid of this guy. And then I can grab this sink and just move it into place. So if you m make one that's embedded into um the original cabinet and then you can place one directly from the library browser and then onto not onto the cabinet initially but onto floor space and then control drag it into the countertop i think that's going to be the way you want to oh, go okay so that's when you would just hold the control key and then you just mouse it over yep yep so this one uh -oh. this one's not actually attached to the vanity it's not as smart um, but yeah, you should be able to just control move it around that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then it'll still show in uh, in an elevation and everything. Like when you say it's not smart, it'll still show in an elevation though if we were to do. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Two things. I may have to create a custom hole for the new one, but you can see I have my oh, sink there. Oh, got you. There. Yep, there it is. But um, yep. That's Needy. something that okay. uh, yeah, comes up relatively regularly. It's a pretty common question because it's common to have two sinks in your vanity. Um, and I think it's something that we're looking at improving in future releases. So hopefully soon we'll have a better solution for you. But that works for now, too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Adrian, we had a couple people write in about send to layout. Norman wanted to know if you can show send to layout. And then Lindsay was wondering if you could show uh, rotating your view in layout. Sure. Um, I can definitely do that for Norman. And was it Lindsay for the second person? Yes. Uh, Lindsay, we can't currently rotate an elevation view in a layout so that's a limitation we have right now um, it's one we know about and one that we're trying to work on you can send your views to layout as um, an image instead of as a, a viewport and you can rotate your images but you can't rotate a, an actual uh, dynamic elevation view but norman um, let's send this elevation to layout so I have it at layout already, but let's just delete this guy and I'll just resend it. So this again, like I said, is our viewport. Um, I'm going to delete it. It's just like an object, like anything else in Chief, and now it's not associated with my layout. Um, a couple things I want to point out that are convenience factors when you're working on the layout, because it's multiple pages, when you are in the kind of in the mode or the mindset where you're adding your views to the layout, it's convenient to have the page active uh, in where you want that view to show up. So I want to just kind of replace that elevation on my page for this layout. And I'll open up this layout, um, sorry, this elevation panel. And you see I clicked on a button and got a weird rendered view here. Let me change this back to a vector view. So I have my fully dimensioned elevation view. If I want to send that to layout, I just choose file, send to layout, and I get this dialog with a, a few different attributes. So usually before I just hit OK, I like to kind of gloss through a few things on this page. Here's that page number. It remembered I was on page four. If you happen to have been on the wrong page number, you can type whatever you want in there, no problem. Um, 
I don't usually change a lot of these other settings. The options, if you're working on a really big uh, floor plan view or a full cross section and you only care about the area that you're zoomed in on your screen, you can choose to send just that zoomed section, the current screen, over to the layout. Doesn't really matter either way, you can still do cropping once you're in that view. And then we have these options for live views and plot lines. Um, oh, and Lindsay, here's this current screen as image option. So if you sent the elevation over to um, your layout as an image, you'd be able to rotate it, but not as a dynamic view. Um, the live view will give you a color elevation and plot lines will give you the black and white line drawing with your line weights. And then uh, under scaling, this is where that half inch scale comes into play that we were talking about before. So if you wanna print it to a certain size and you know it will fit, half inch scale is the right way. And you just hit okay. And the program's chewing on that and it's going to automatically, I think, open up the page of our layout. Yep, there it is. And you can see it just dumps it right here in the middle of our screen. And it's got, uh, when I click on it, it's got this big bounding box uh, because it sent the entire um, view over. And so I can just move this around like I would anything else in the program. And when you resize a, the edges of a layout, you're actually cropping your view. So if you were sending a bigger view that had a whole bunch of extra stuff on it that you don't want to see, then you can grab these edges and just pull in I kind of can show you like these dimensions. Maybe I wanted to omit those, but not delete them from my original plan. I can just come here and crop those right out. So like I said, it's a viewport and it's just, um, it's like looking out a window, you know, you only get to see where the glass is. So you're defining uh, the area of the viewport by using these uh, edge handles. Yeah, that, that's awesome, Adrian. Thanks for that. Just um, one quick thing. On the elevation, if I wanted to do like um, some annotations without the dimensions, do you use that same section and hide the dimensions or do you do a separate sort of elevation? I think I would do a separate elevation um, just because it, I can save both states in my project browser and I could label them exactly how I want it to show up. So, you know, I would have my section view here and maybe I'd have, you know, B vanity wall with, with dimensions and without dimensions. Um, okay, cool. Because yeah, uh, what, I've, what I've been trying to do is sort of switch the dimension layer off when mm -hmm. it, and have the annotation layer on mm -hmm. and export, export that to like the annotation on my layout, mm -hmm. but then it gets confusing when I try and swap it the other way because it's sort of different layer sets. Yes, um, you're exactly what I'm right. What I'm getting is dimensions when I shouldn't and then trying to, so yeah, yeah that, make, that makes a lot of sense. Yes, so yeah, to kind of address what Norman's referring to, um, because this view is linked, it's, um, it's just like it's a viewport, so it's linked and it's looking at the state of your saved camera. If you were to come in here and turn these dimensions off just for the sake of a different layout page, um, what you'll probably see is you'll feel like you're chasing your tail a little bit where it's going to turn those same dimensions off on your previous page. So you'd be in this constant like toggle back and forth mode. So that's where, yeah, it's really useful to um, create a new layer set. So again, that will be if we look at edit view here. And I think this is, again, this is some of the good stuff that Scott will help cover next week too. But under your layer set, what I would choose to do is define a second section view set and it would have, um, one would have annotations and one would have dimensions. And then for this um, wall elevation, I would have my specification um, set to use my dimensioned version. So this would be kind of the static saved um, configuration I'd have for this version of the elevation. And then I'd make a second elevation and I would set that layer set to use the annotation layer set. So it would just be preserved indefinitely. And then you can send each of those um, 
to your layout independently. So yeah, if you so, think about sorry, in the in the project browser, can I just make a copy of that elevation down and then just rather than have to go into the plan view and yeah. the camera? For almost any type of view, you can make a copy except for section views. So that's the caveat. Um, you can do that for camera views and you can even do it for plan views. Right now, we don't have a, the ability to do a copy for your section views and elevation views. So you, you'll have to make a new um, elevation view. Yep. Okay, so it's not just me then. Nope, it's not just you. And that's another one of those requests we hear quite a bit and hopefully we'll get some traction on it in a okay. coming release. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll ask Scott to add that to my list. Perfect. <laughs> All okay, right. Thanks so much, Andrea. No problem. And then Amy has a question. Okay. Hi, Amy. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, and it's a little bit off topic, but um, I have been struggling with trying to create a door with a pediment over it. So I've played with adding a lintel, trying to add a molding, but it doesn't have a molding tab. Do you have a workaround? So, um, so your pediment just has the molding profile, or do you have like a detail in the middle of it, or what's the? Um... So basic, the basic one I'm just trying to make, where you have the casing go up the sides, an extended um, lintel that would just be maybe a one by six, and then mm -hmm. a small crown molding at the top, and pr preferably like a little pencil molding between the casing and the lintel. Okay. Um, let me look real quickly. I think, yes, I think we have a good solution for that. And uh, if I just need to refresh on how to do it real quickly. So let me open up this door specification and we'll try to just do it on this pocket door. So we have, um, yes, okay. So in the lintel profile or in the lintel panel. Is that a new door? I haven't seen um, that one. This is a door that has, let me look real quickly here, lights. So we it's just a, if you look at this door style, it's just a glass door. And then we came into the lights panel and I can control the number of lights here, I think. Is that a new option? Um, no, but it is restricted to the glass panel, glass and okay. glass panel doors only. Okay. So you have to have, you can't have a library or a um, symbol door specified here. It just needs to be glass panel. Okay. So she's asking about these dividers, um, how you get as many dividers on here as you'd like. If you start with a glass panel door, you can come to the, oh, I just lost it, lights panel. And this allows you to control the number of those and then the size of them. So I can add um, vertical and horizontal there. But yes, back to our lintel question. We have the lintel panel and you can choose to just show or hide the default lintel, which it sounds like you've figured out and you can extend it. So that gives you that uh, overlap over the edge. You can also add a profile to it. So um, I'll just go to my library browser. And I don't know if we have one that's um, exactly like what you're describing, but I'll show you how to throw one on there. And then you can also draw your own custom profiles. So let's look at, oh, I don't even know where to look. Here's something where um, you have a flat, if you imagine this is your flat lintel board and then a profiled shape on top. Yeah, I think I tried maybe number six or 12. I can't remember. And it, it kind of sort of kind of gave me the feeling, but I didn't exactly know there was a way to right. Yeah. I didn't think yeah. about drawing my own profile. Yeah. So let's just do one real quick if um, nobody's opposed to that idea. And I'll just show you kind of or the rest of the group how it works. And really quite easy. It's again, we're doing more CAD work. So I'm just zooming in to a section of my screen and I'll use my box um, tool and I'll just click, click and drag a uh, rectangle. I'm gonna turn my line weights off. And then I'll use the break tool to um, kind of add breaks. Of course, you can be much more accurate than I'm going to be. But what we're doing is just drawing the shape that one may want 
for their um, pediment and I don't know we'll just do like something like this so I'm just adding breaks and I'm using the grip handles to reshape it and we'll put a little cove up on the top here and you're doing this in the box tool uh, I used the I started with the box tool to give myself a closed polyline shape and then um, I've selected each of the different edges of my polyline and I use the break tool to add these corners and that allows me to shape it a little bit yep it's so I have noticed that my polyline tool has disappeared from my toolbar when I upgraded to 12. it disappeared that's no good. I have to so, go back to build to find it, but I'll set this up for another time. Okay. Also, in your preferences, you have the option to reset your toolbars, um, and that may help. So it could be that when you upgraded, it um, migrated your toolbars across, and it lost that, that tool. So okay. something to look at. So we'll just imagine that this is the most beautiful pediment ever, okay. and <laughs> this is what we want. Um, once you have it designed and, and the, the, the actual cut profile shaped properly, um, if you have it selected and it's got this gray fill, so it's a closed polyline, you can choose add to library. And it's just gonna add my molding to the library here and I can name it, you know, whatever, so I can find it in the future. And then I can come back to, um, let's just zoom. Uh, come back to my door. And then onto that lintel panel again. And we'll just go browse out to our, our custom library. Choose that um, profile we create. And then you can set the height, whatever you want for that. Okay. So you did not have to change that into a different type of library item. You just no. were able to. Okay. Yep. In that. Um, in the specification dialog, there's a, that library option lets me choose a profile. So yeah, this for okay. any, for any of the casing type items, you can um, use a profile. There is another panel on here. What you might be thinking of, um, and I don't, I can't think of where it is off the top of my head, but there's a, a different location where you can add a, a 3D or symbol-based um, cap yeah. to the top. So th that's an option if it's not an extrusion, if it's got maybe a keystone or something in the middle, you might choose that option. But if it's an extrusion where it's just an assembly of different moldings, then I would choose to draw a custom profile and attach it as my uh, lintel. Great, thank you. Yeah, you're, no problem. Anything else? Do we have other questions or any topics that um, I know I didn't cover a huge amount with dimensionings, but you, I can show you um, other controls in the program. Uh, we did have Tamala write in a question. I'll unmute her mic and see if she wants to ask that. Okay. Hello, Tamala. Hi. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. How are you? Terrific. Well, I'm charming and delightful when asked, but I, <laughs> <laughs> you asked, I, I, I like I'm having a problem this week, uh, uh, was sending layouts to layout sheets and the dimensions on my, uh, on my uh, layout of the overall floor plan would be too small for the client to see. But when uh, I had elevation drawings, they were just the right size. So is there some way to make some consistency? Uh, sure, yeah. So I think that comes back around to the scaling question and um, which dimension default you're using. First of all, um, 
if it's you might have to check your views in your project browser where it shows like um we were looking at sorry my phone's buzzing um where we were looking at the selected defaults and the dimension defaults if you were to kind of poke in there and see um the scale that it's using so um kind of be conscious of that and then when you send your view to layout um, make sure that the text style that you're sending to layout matches the scale you're sending to. So if you have a big floor plan and it doesn't fit at half inch scale, maybe you're having to send it at a quarter inch scale or something, that might mean that you need to change your dimension default for just your plan views to use a matching scale, like a quarter inch scale dimension default. Is that okay. big, so the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, was I interrupting somebody? I'm sorry. Nope. So, nope. so basically, I think what you're saying to do, for instance, I have a floor plan, uh, and I'm I'm go I can send it to half inch or excuse me quarter inch scale, mm -hmm. and that that prints out okay. But then I have the uh, elevation views that I want to send. I go into this dialog box and I change that default to right. more appropriate size. Okay. Well, that's a very easy answer. Thank you so much. Yeah. No problem. Mm -hmm. Adrian, Ann was just wondering, is it possible when Chief has designated a certain size of a dimension, can you manually go in and update it if you know that that number is incorrect? So if she, if Chief has designated it as 135 and 1 eighth inch, but mm -hmm. she knows it's 135 and a quarter inch, can she mm -hmm. manually change the numbers? Oh yeah, that's a good question. And this is a newer feature. Uh, there's a couple methods of doing this, so I can show you that. And um, there's also a newer feature in Chief. So let's look at the example on my screen of our elevations and say we have these 1 8 inch dimensions. Um, always I recommend that um, you do what you can in your drawing to make sure that the dimension reflects the correct dimension just because that's gonna may save you headache in the future you don't want to have something that doesn't actually fit you know because we didn't follow that precaution first so obviously first of all you can select your dimension and, or sorry select the object and click on the dimension that it relates to and you can type in 15.25 for example if I want it to be 15 and a quarter maybe. So um, this is actually manipulating the model and it's moving objects in your design uh, so that they're accurately placed. So that's always my very first recommendation. Um, my second recommendation is you can open any dimension string and in the primary format panel here you can override um, what the program thinks it should do automatically so uncheck use default formatting and right now this particular dimension string says that I'm going to show accuracy up to 1 16th of an inch and it just may simply be that you don't need that accuracy maybe you only need half inch or full inch accuracy so you can come into your dimension and let's change this to one half inch and if you just watch um, these numbers when I hit OK the program is going to automatically round that value so that it reflects um, the smallest increment that you set in that specification dialog. So that will only show half inch is the smallest value for that particular string. The third option is that um, if that's not satisfactory and you want to typically use the defaults, which is not a bad idea, um, but you just want this number to read something differently, then you can come into the segments panel. Um, and I have to refresh, sorry, I'm reading my dialogue here. This is new in X12, um, but you are able to suppress the current dimension value. So if I just hit OK, you can see what this, this actually does. So it gets rid of that information altogether. And then also, when I open up this dimension here, I can reinsert a different value. So I could put 15 
and you know, seven thirty seconds or whatever it needs to be here. And so the program is going to insert new text to where that old text used to be. So um, yeah, those are kind of the three methods that you have in your toolkit to control how these read. But I would always recommend making sure your uh, design is, is as accurate as possible first. Adrian Norman had a comment about um, rescaling. Yeah, Norman. Hi. Once. Hi, Adrian. Something that I picked up from one of Scott's webinars, which the people present might find handy, and, and the delightful lady that was on earlier, is sometimes I will export my plan to layout, and then obviously you've got that portal window, so you can zoom into the area of your bathroom or kitchen or whatever it is you're working on. Mm -hmm. And if you just, if you click and select it down in the bottom, you have rescale object. Yes. So ra rather than having to go through that whole what scale you you um, importing into layout, you can quite easily change that. So she might find that handy rather than to try and do yeah. that whole export import view. you. Yep, you're right. That's a great tip. Um, yeah, as long as the view that you need to show fits onto um, the screen, then you can just hit this rescale option that Norman is mentioning, and you can manually just change that scale on the fly. So like if, let's change it to um, quarter inch scale, just so you can see what happens there. So if I hit OK, then it's going to suck that all down um, to draw at a quarter inch scale on this sheet. So you can and do the reverse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's really useful. So like when you're importing your elevations, typically I keep them at the scale that I want. But mm -hmm. if, if you go to your plan view and you import your plan, it might show you the whole sort of first floor level. So you right. can kind of you can kind of drag into that area on your layout and just tell it to rescale. So right. your scale can go from a, a one in a hundred to sort of one in twenty-five, and then you can just position that so it's clearer for the clients to look at. Yep, yep, that's great. That's perfect. And yeah, so just kind of also illustrating a few of the things that Norman is mentioning. Like I I said before, you can crop in. So he's suggesting that you'd be able to just kind of zoom right in on the detail that you care most about, and then you can increase the scale of the view so that it fills the page with more detail. Thanks, Norman, that's a good comment. Okay, thanks so much. Adrian Charles de Freitas has a question. Hi, Charles. Hi, I typically uh, do a lot of half walls uh, in the shower as you mm -hmm. come in, and every time I use a half wall, it never, it doesn't, allow me to give a dimension, the height of dimension. Every time I click on it, it shows that it's a, it's a full length wall. How do I determine if I want to do a 42 inch or a 36 inch wall? Okay, um, and you're trying to set the height in your plan view or in your camera views? Uh, typically. Or in the dialogue. I can either do it in a cross section. I tried everything and I can't seem to you know, give okay. it a dimension how tall I want it to be. Okay. Um, so Charles's question is, how do you control? So if you're just uh, if you're doing a shower, a tiled bottom half uh, shower wall, maybe, mm -hmm. um, how do you control the height of that? Um, so I'll draw one on my screen and we'll edit it and see how it works. So um, I'm I'm coming into my wall tool here and down in the drop down you have a lot of different options. There's a few ways to achieve the um, half height wall, here is a button for it. So we'll just use that, that's an easy way to do it. So I'll click and drag and it will draw that wall on my screen. Next, uh, what I'm gonna do is come into the dialogue and it, this is where it gets kind of funny. Um, it's not 100% clear because it calls it a railing specification. And right. then you have all of these wall controls with different values and none of them appear to control the height. The catch is that you need to come into the rail style. You don't, you actually don't need to come in here. The rail style defines that it's a solid wall. So right here, this is the mm -hmm. control right there that makes it solid. On the newels and balusters panel, so if I click on that, this one is controlling the height of 
that wall and where the cap hits. So it's right here. If I want this to be probably 48 or 42 is right. relatively typical. Uh, just enter 42 in here, and then you can see it bumped that height up. So yeah, it's a, kind of a memory game. Remember to go right. into Newell's and Ballster's. It's a little bit hidden in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. That answer. It's been a while. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Adrian, we have Amal here with a question. Hello. Hello. I may have heard us. Sounds like we can't hear you, Amal, so I'll just read your question. He's wondering if um, you could show how to make floors with different finishes and shapes. Sure. This is a great plan to show that in. Um, so, like, just so I understand the question, this particular room, I'm going to try to take a camera view from this corner and just into the space, and hopefully we can see the the floor. So sometimes you'll want to do transition spaces between wet, wet and dry, especially in a, um, a bathroom or a uh, entry for a tub and that sort of thing. I presume that's the sort of scenario you're kind of talking about. Um, this bathroom has exactly that type of a thing going on where we have a transition between the cork floor to um, this, I think it's probably a, a faux tile um, or a faux, faux wood tile, and then also a pebble tile inside the shower. So uh, I just try to remember here. The room definition, when I click on the room, I don't know if you guys can see very well, but there's this faint gray line here, and that's showing me that I have a room selected. Um, kind of a nice tip to understand while I'm on the topic is anytime you have anything in the program selected, look down on the very, very bottom left corner of your screen, and we have a status bar there. It tells you what the item is that's selected. Right now, this is telling us that our room is selected. So the room has, in its specification dialog, we have um, the ability to assign materials. And for this room, the cork material has been applied to the primary floor. But we do want to show this transition uh, to a wet area on the floor. And that has been done with, um, if I select this piece, again, in my status bar, it's called a material region. So this is a mechanism that allows you to use, again, those CAD shapes and the polylines like we did for the fills and the molding profile. And you can create a custom shape that um, transitions around the edges of the room. And then it's got its own properties. So it's a smart object. And it um, allows you to cut the finished la layers of your existing floor. So that just simply means it's going to get rid of uh, the cork in this area and replace it with whatever the assembly is that you're creating out of that shape. So that's under the edit tool here. You can tell it you need to have thin set and you need to have tile. Those will go to your materials list. So the way that you can access that tool is you'll want to draw it while you're in your plan view. So I'll go to my plan view tab. And if I remember correctly, it's under the build menu. And I think under floor, yep, under floor, it's called floor material region. And when you click on that tool, it just puts you in that same kind of box uh, CAD drawing mode. So you can start drawing your shapes, use the break tool and edit the edges in order to turn that into a custom shape. Here's the, this is the CAD I created to do this shape for that. Um, a uh, faux wood tile floor for this bathroom. Any other questions? Just raise your hand if you have any questions. Uh, we have Gina De Massimo again. Go ahead, Gina. Hey. 
Hi, um, just looking at, at what uh, you did, I guess it would be the same process if we would like to add uh, different kind of uh, tiles on a, on a wall in a shower, yep. for example, eh? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. and yep, it's almost exactly feature, the same. Uh, is this feature with the build available in the interior re uh, software or it's only in the full, uh, full uh, software? Where, yeah. Phil, Premier. do you know that off the top of your head? I believe it probably is Premiere only. Ah, okay. But um, we do have um, what we call a backsplash tool. It's essentially the same thing, but it works in elevation views. It doesn't work on a floor. It works in an elevation. Um, and it's the custom backsplash tool. So let's see. Do I have my elevation open? Uh, in the interiors version, we do have the custom backsplash tool, and that's under yeah. the cabinet feature, and it mm -hmm. works almost exactly the same way. It's just that you have to place it on a on a vertical surface instead of on a floor surface. Mm -hmm. I can use the CAD tool to create a different region and apply a different material. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so it it is. Yeah. The custom backsplash is also a custom CAD object, and you can create any CAD shape, and you can convert it to a backsplash also. So if I started with um, a CAD that didn't have um, the material properties for a backsplash in it, you can draw. You can just raw draw the CAD here, and when you have your finished shape drawn, you select it. And this little yellow button in your edit toolbar is called Convert Polyline. If you click on that, it will bring up the Convert Polyline option and allow you to choose the type of thing you want to convert it into. And so in this case, it will be a version of, um, it may say custom backsplash for interiors, or maybe you do have this material region option, and it will convert it into that smart object that can remove the finished layers the same way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Ute has a question. Okay. You. Yes. In regards to the call outs that I see on your current floor plan, yeah. do they automatically appear also on an elevation? Or how uh, is that possible? The, are you talking about these call outs with the arrows on them? No, the callouts with the circles around. The circle callouts. These yeah. ones are notes that I added in my floor plan view. Um, so they don't automatically display in my plan view. I would have to redraw those um, notes in an elevation if I wanted to. But I think I could, let's try, I may be able to copy and paste from one view to another. So if I choose copy and go into my elevation view and we'll try pasting it. So I'll put it right here. Yeah, so you can paste them into existing views. I think I don't have that layer turned on, so I just lost it. But um, yeah, those are notes, and they are part of our notes schedule. So that you can, I don't know if anyone's been using these yet, but um, these note objects, you can open up their specification, and you can include um, a description about it and you can choose what type of note it is so that you can have you know different notes for the different types of work that you're doing maybe you'll have plumbing notes cabinet notes uh, electrical notes those sorts of things you can enter all the information into the note and then it gets reflected onto this note schedule so this is just a schedule like anything else and you have full control of how it displays right now I'm telling it to only show the 2D marker for the note and the text um, that I added in there for the comments regarding the note. Okay. So those are really an easy, useful way to yeah get everything marked out for your okay, final drawings. You. Yeah, thank you. Um, Lisa Aiello has a question. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how uh, are you? Good, thanks. I was, I'm caught off guard because I just saw the answer, but I don't know if I can actually um, apply it because okay. I, okay. I have a two-story home that I put similar to what you have over to the, the right-hand side of my screen. Um, 
the stairs and you can actually view into the downstairs living area. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wound up making that uh, too large of an opening and I want to decrease that whole space. So How can I go about doing that. I can't seem to get dimension lines every time I put the floor area on it grays it out so I can't seem to grab that. Like yours is defined, mine mm -hmm. is not being defined. Okay. So the first thing you'll want to do when you're troubleshooting, especially your stairway or any type of a room is um yeah, you'll need to make sure you have room definitions. So um that's where uh, right now I have kind of this hall area selected and it's a totally uh, unique room type. Mm -hmm. um, when I draw the opening for my stairs, these are defined by another room. So this is a whole room of its own and it's got railings. So um, uh -huh. these could be those half walls or they could be baluster railings and they have to connect to you know, the solid wall on each side and the corners each have to connect to each other. So if I have like, if I have something like this, where it's almost connected, but not quite, you can kind of follow the fill sometimes. So okay, you see that's what the, yeah, that's what my area is doing right now. Yeah, so what we need to do is figure out why, um, why where the break in connection is. So that's one thing to look for is if you can see where the bleed is, where it's bleeding that fill between the rooms, that might be the point. The other thing to check while we're kind of talking about it is you can open up your railing. So this is your railing specification. Mm -hmm. And on the general panel right here, okay. make sure that known room definition is not checked because if it is checked, then the program's gonna totally ignore that rule railing as a divider and it won't break your um, rooms into two uh, different okay. rooms. Okay, okay. So you might have to check each of the different railings and the walls that surround that stairwell in order to double check that it's not turned on. So okay. I would look for those things, yeah. Okay, I will, thank you. No problem. We have Howard McCall with a question. Hi, Howard. Hi, how are you? I. Uh, I'm fairly new to this, and I'm I'm uh, actually still using X11, but I have not figured out how to get those libraries moved, uh, so I have a wider range of use of libraries. Where do I import them from? Okay, yeah. So um, you, this is our library browser, just for anyone that's not familiar, um, and inside the library you have. A whole bunch of stuff that you can browse from and that includes things like manufacturer catalogs so those are the different brands that we partner with and we have bonus catalogs um, those are essentially just generic things that you can add on to your product so i presume you're asking howard how do you get more of these to show up in your library browser yes okay so there's a couple ways to do that let me double check here Yes, so down on the very bottom of your library browser, you have a whole roll of buttons. Um, one of those buttons, the second one, is called Get Additional Content Online. If you click on that, it should open up um, your internet browser to uh, what we call our 3D library. Oh, I have, sorry, my system has a setting different. You can also browse to our uh, Chief Architect website. That button should take most of you there. It's just failed on my particular situation. And then um, from the user center uh, area of the menu, choose catalog downloads. And this will take you over to our 3D library interface. So this is kind of our bucket where Every time we make a new catalog partner or new content, come out here and you can um, browse this area and download these catalogs. If you're an active user and have, F have SSA access, then most of these catalogs are free of charge and you don't have to do anything except um, choose the download button. I'm not logged in right now. Um, and it will just download it onto your system and it will automatically load it into your library browser. Um, 
if you're not active in SSA, you may have to do some purchases, and um, but even still, after you're done with that process, then again, it will download it onto your system, and if it doesn't launch it, you can just double click on that file, and it will uh, launch the installer for that catalog so it shows up in your library browser in the future. Okay, that's great. Thanks. I'll try it. All right, great. Uh, Adrian Norman has another question. Hi, Norman. Hey, Adrian. Just two things. Can you just show us how you pulled up the notes? Because I, I see you've got it there, and obviously the schedule. So that's similar to building a window schedule. But how did you actually pick up sure. that note? Yeah, I can show you how to do um, both add a note and create a note schedule. So um, notes are new, I think they were new in uh, Chief X11, and they're a function of annotation and text. So they will be found in your uh, text tool, and it's this note option. So if you click on note, it'll just put you in the little uh, note mode, and it will bring up the specification. So this is where I can add the description for that. And the type, is uh, relatively important. This is how you choose which of your note schedules this particular note will be represented in. So you can set that up. This is a um, user customizable field. So you can set up any type of a category you need. So if you need, like I mentioned before, something for your plumber and one for your electrician, then you can set those categories up. But then um, beyond that, you just hit OK. And because this one, I already have a schedule on my plan. Uh, it just shows up as a new note in the list, so it's number 14. If you don't have a schedule on your screen, you may not see um, as much feedback, so, but as long as you've placed the note, if you come into the Tools menu, you can go down to Schedules, and then we have Note Schedule. So if you just click on that option, then it allows you to drop a new schedule onto your screen. Okay, that's so then we have to, yeah. yeah. And then another thing with schedules, just to point out, maybe you know this, Norman, but I don't know if others do. Um, for any schedule, you get to choose how these um, are numbered and ordered. So you can grab this uh, little handle over the numbered area and drag up or down, and then it will just renumber that note and um, let you organize those however you want. So that works for any schedule. Yeah, that's that's really helpful because sometimes you you forget a note, but you don't want number fourteen between right. one and two, so you can just change your position. Exactly. Okay, yep. that's awesome. One one right. other thing is I'm I'm not sure, and I used to use the auto interior dimension quite a bit, and I think mm -hmm. from Chief Eleven that seems to have dropped, and I don't see that anymore. Yeah, we. We hid the auto interior dimension tool from this list, um, mostly because we felt like there weren't enough user-defined controls for it and weren't completely satisfied with the results. But I believe, um, if I look in here, well, we may have gotten rid of it altogether. I thought we had just removed it from the toolbar, but it looks like maybe that tool has been um, left behind. Yeah. Adrian, if okay, you select, cool. okay, sorry, Philip here. Uh, if you select in a room, it's now in that bottom toolbar. Oh, thanks, Phil. Okay, yes. So you can do it on a room by room basis. So um, if you click on a room and come to your edit toolbar, it's right here on the bottom, auto interior dimension. So instead of doing it from up here, um, where I, I think that is that is the difference, is we didn't think it was useful to auto dimension every single room in an entire floor plan. So now you just do it on a single room basis with the edit tool. That is absolutely awesome. Thanks so much. That's, yes. That's a bit of Thanks, a result. So, since then, I've just been going through and, and sort of doing the manual dimension and that, so being able to put it in. Yeah. So t typically, like anyone, I just trace out my, my general plan, put all mm -hmm. my walls in, and then go through it, and I've had to sort of do all that manual dimension, and I, I figured, much like you had said, not a lot of users had it and you dropped it, but to be able to yeah. pick it up inside that room is great, so thanks, Phil. Yeah, thanks, Phil. You're welcome, guys.
Uh, Adrian uh, Gloria has another question. Okay. Go ahead, Gloria. Um, hi. Um, I missed. I think I must have missed how you how you got the corresponding numbers on your floor plan for the schedule for the notes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So those are. It's an. It's a newer object in the program, and it's called the note tool. So up here on your uh, okay. near your dimension yeah. tools, if you choose from the drop down, uh, you can choose note. And it will just put you in the mode where you drop the note anywhere on your screen. So I like, you know, if I wanted to have oh. a note about my hook, then I can just drop it near that. That's and this is where, and that's on yeah. interiors too. Uh, I believe yes. I'm fairly okay. certain it is an interiors. Yes. Great. Yep. That's the part I missed. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Yep. Anything else? We, might uh, we don't have any current questions uh, waiting, but there was one last question that was emailed in. Maybe we could go over real quick um, oh, how to sure. include door swing direction in a K and B elevation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead and um, we'll take an elevation that shows this door uh, since it's a, it's a hinged door. Um, so I'll just open my wall elevation here and I'll click and drag. And this one already has it turned on, but for any hinge door, you're able to turn on this opening indicator. And we have this for cabinet doors too. So you can do it for either of those types of objects, but uh, it's a layer control. So one easy way to get to this control is by selecting the door and then going to your object layer properties again one of my favorite tools and this dialog shows you all of the layers that are affiliated with this particular object that i've selected and one of those layers is opening indicators so you can turn this to be on or off and it will save with the layer set that's being used with this view so i'll turn it off just to illustrate and it turns that indicator off but again, you can just go right back into object layer properties and we're going to put a check mark next to display and that will turn that uh, swing indicator on for those views. I believe you can also turn on um, the swing direction in your automatic layers or label and you can also, when you create your door schedule, you can choose to turn on the column that displays the swing or hinge side for your doors as well. I think that's all the questions we have today, Adrian. Okay. Carrie can post a link for next week's webinar, I believe. It is, again, um, it's a pretty important one. It's about setting up your templates, um, creating those saved plan views that are essentially like your view portals that you use on your layout. So you can preserve those in your project browser and reaccess those and edit them. And it's also about setting up those default sets. So we've talked a lot um, this session about setting up your scaling and setting up your different dimension defaults so that they'll show in some views and not in other views and they'll print at different sizes. Those are all um, really important um, pieces of default sets. So yeah, I would really encourage you to, if you have the opportunity, uh, tune in next Thursday at noon for um, Scott's demonstration on these productivity tips. And then, I'm sorry, Carrie, I might have to beg your help for the next few uh, weeks after that. We're going to be doing webinars each Thursday for the next month, I think, um, the same time at Thursday at noon. Yep, some of the upcoming webinars, you can check our website. I posted a link in the chat section. Um, but we're going to be covering roofs, ceilings, terrain, 3D rendering, ray trace. Um, all of those are coming up in the coming weeks. So um, just keep an eye on our website and you'll see the updates there. And we also have our trial version available for download. So um, if there's a few of you out there that maybe aren't using Chief Premier, or um, not using Chief Architect at all, you're just kind of tuning in to see how this thing works, um, visit our website 
and we have a link there on the front for downloading a trial version. So you can do everything that we're doing here in the program. You just simply can't save that work and you can't print the work. So that's the difference. But we do have um, a purchase straight from the trial version. So if you get, you know, a real awesome project that you've started and you just can't bear to close the program and lose it all, you can purchase the software right there and continue on. Just wanted to give you one more reminder that we do have a sale right now on the software. So make sure that you kind of check out those options. And um, we're continuing to offer different learning resources. So um, we're gonna do some more uh, classroom style training that's online training that's uh, paid. We have one-on-one -on -one training, so if you want to get even further in depth with the trainer, you're able to schedule some time to do that with them. And we'll continue to do some of these free webinars as well. So yeah, make sure you stay tuned in and um, you can learn all sorts of things about Chief Architect. And I think we're recording this session and we'll be able to send out um, a link to those of you who are interested or who have attended so that you know you can see any of the other details there. All right, is there anything that I'm forgetting, Carrie and Phil? I think you you covered everything. All right. Well, I'm going to close it out and again thanks everybody and have a great day. It's beautiful and sunny here in Coeur d'Alene. I hope it's sunny where you are too. <laughs>